I'm Stephen King and I'm a professor of emerging technologies at UNC and I run the Reese Innovation Lab. I've just been hosting my class in Altspace VR and I thought I'd give you a kind of behind the scenes and a how-to guide on how to host and build your class in Altspace VR. So today we're going to cover how to change your settings, how to create a group, then how to create an event inside the group, and then if you want to customize the world or the event space that you're in, how you can do that. So first, let's start by making setting up and changing our settings. So we have a browser which um, by default does not include all of the things that we're going to need that are in this more window. The way you enable that is inside of Altspace VR app. You're, you can see I'm logged in. I'm in my home space. I'm going to uh, select the menu and then under general you want to make sure that you have both the participation in early access program enabled and enable worlds beta. Both of those need to be turned on and once those are turned on you will see down here the worlds uh, becomes activated as well as when you log in and log out of the uh, web interface you'll see more in the more drop down menu which most importantly is the groups. So enable those settings. You'll also want your students to enable those settings as well. Now that we have that menu item enabled, we're going to create a group. So under more, select groups. You see I have one created, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to create one. So I'm going to create a group called teachers and VR. A playground for. And then you need to put a username. I also have created a second account, which helps me to test from the user's experience. What, was it, what are my students seeing? And so I think that's really good. I actually have um, two logins that I use with two different email addresses that I do that. And so you're going to put those users in uh, that uh, list. If you don't know those right now, you don't have to. But that's how you're going to enable that. You could also invite them from their email address, but I use the username. And then you're going to want to go through and uh, select in upload these images. So in this case we have um, a custom image and I'll talk about this in the web post about what you need to do but it's a 1920 by 1080 image so it's 16 by 9 and this is the main kind of top image you see um, that's used for promoting of your um, the promoting of your events and things inside your group. You'll also want to create one that is a square image. It's a 512 by 512 and you're going to previously create those images and upload them. Now in the YouTube group ID that's only if your YouTube video ID you only need to do that if you have a YouTube channel that you want to show as well as if you have a Twitter account that you want to show and it basically puts a widget on the web page. So uh, I'm not going to create this group because I'm not adding all these pieces in but the one last thing you want to make sure you do is you need to select which room or environment you want this to be in. So you can change it later but I like the meeting room and I like the boardroom for kind of standard classes. My class has about 30 people in it, and both of these work for it. Um, I think the boardroom works best when we do breakout sessions. But if you're doing a presentation that um, maybe you want to do more like the VR podcast, where you have a bunch of people kind of sitting there listening to a lecture, you may want to choose more of a, an amphitheater type look. But in, any of them are fine. Just select one. Now, I'm going to go back to my groups so you can see what it looks like if I had actually created it. So here I have a new group page that gets created. You can see these are the members in my class um, that, that get shown there. Um, and then I have this common space that's really built around the meeting room. And that's where students can go at any time, any day of the week, anytime they want. This is always up and running, but it's not where we host class. It's where they're gathering space and they can work in teams. If you ever need to edit anything that you already just did, you'll go to the edit here and you can see we've got the users and all of that. Um, but then once we have created our group and we've invited people, um, we want to go and create an event. 
inside the web browser, you want to do this in the web browser. I know you can do it in the um, in the alt space client, but I like to do it in the web browser because I'm able to upload the images easier and those kinds of things. So I'm going to create an event and you give it a name. So this is um, what our class name is and then class time for uh, of 88. And then choose a start date. So my class is on Wednesday and it actually runs, it starts at two o'clock, but I set it for one 45, um, oops, sorry. Okay. I set mine for 1.45 p.m. because I want to have 15 minutes early for the students to get in early, and then I have it end uh, an extra 15 minutes after class just so that they can, um, they have plenty of time. And that ends from uh, at, 5 o'clock p.m. And then you can select the category. This is basically where does it appear in the menu. I leave mine all on presentation, but it's up to you. And then I want this to be a private event because I don't want random people just coming into our class. I only want it for our class. And so I set it to private. So then anyone inside our group will be able to attend this event. And then you want to make sure that you uh, select which uh, room you want to use. So if you've created a custom world, which we can talk about in another video, uh, you can use that. But I'm going to choose the boardroom meeting. And then I am going to hit, uh, go through and look and just let me show you some of these extra things. If you want to promote and add some new images, you can upload a different 16 by nine image. I encourage you to do that and make it slightly different than your group one so that when people are looking around, they know it's you, they know it's your group, but they know it's an event that is different than the commons area. And then you can do a background image that is a, another size. Um, that's the one that you're actually seeing up here, up at the top. Um, and uh, and then if you want to have someone automatically come in as an admin or something, uh, you can set those different roles where they come in with the megaphone. So I do that for myself. I go ahead and set myself up with the megaphone just so it, it comes on. And anything you want to show when they come into the room, you can do that there. Um, and then if you need URLs that you want to make sure um, are open domains, you can go ahead and add those here. This is more of an advanced feature that you only need if it's um, if you're loading in the SDK for some other outside things that you're going to be. So for what you're doing for this tutorial, I would not uh, edit that. And then down here, you just want to make sure your group is selected, um, which it should be by default. And um, that's kind of all you need to, to do right now. And then you can click uh, create an event. So now we have an event. And if I go over here to my back to my client, I can go here to events. And then if any of your students, once they're logged in, they should see under my events, they should see events that they are able to go into. Now, if it's not time yet, they'll just see, uh, they won't be able to enter. But in my case, since I'm the admin who created it, then I can go ahead and enter this event. So here is my classroom. I'm able to move around and I do this in VR, but I also do it on the desktop. Uh, it just kind of depends on what I do. I like to do my world editing and building here on the desktop. And so if I want to customize this world, I can do that here. Now, one thing you can do is come here to the web browser and put in a URL. Uh, and it will load that URL on the browser. It should, it looks like it didn't load the JavaScript. There we go. And now that is loading uh, there. And so anyone who comes into the room now will be able to see that web browser. But I can use my world editor and I can add elements to this. And in this case, you see there's some help text that have been added, spawn points. These are all already included, but I can add my own elements. So if I go to mine and I go to, in this case, photos, I could choose to add a logo. So how did these photos get there? Now we got to switch back to the web browser. So back over here under Altspace main menu here, you see photos and you can see I can add photos here. So I just click upload and then there's 
uh, choose your file and so you will select the pictures that you want to show and hit upload and then those appear in your my photos and once they've been uploaded through the browser then they appear over in the client oops sorry they appear over here in the client so you're able to we'll just pick one we just pick one and then you'll see that it appears right here once I have it I can select it and move it I can also um, edit the settings so see, see Stephen King's photo right here I can click on the settings and I can change the scale so if I wanted to make it actual size I can make it a lot bigger notice where it is in 3d space um, and then I can kind of move that around and put it wherever I want to. It takes a little bit of getting used to as far as putting stuff on walls and finding that right space. So I tend to um, move my arrows, get into the right space, change my angle and do that. And then sometimes I end up fine tuning things using the settings so I can change my rotation, which I rarely do that, but I tend to change the X and Y coordinates um, often. So if I change this to uh, 10, or sorry, negative 10, you should watch this move and then hit confirm and then it moved farther back right and so uh, you can see if where it's going to go on the wall so I tend to try to place these on the walls and move them around and then once you get them into the position that you want you can hit lock so once it's locked in there now another little nice feature you want to do in case the menu item is, is kind of in your way you can uh, you can move that by grabbing the arrows there and then you can also in the settings change the names here so this is like wide logo and hit confirm and so uh, so that's kind of where it is and then um, I'm going to close my world editor and you'll see if I walk over there this logo is sitting in 3d space okay now what you probably want to do is actually put it on a wall where it fills more natural but you get the idea once you've made that world once you've made that event when they come into this that will be there and it's ready to go um, if you want to create your own template and world that's another tutorial for another day but what's nice about that is you can create it once and have a classroom that you will use on a regular basis